So apparently I haven't made a video in a while. A few people have pointed that out. So I'm back and I want to talk painting fundamentals for 10 minutes. What I'm going to paint here is a very simple scene and everything I talk about is going to deal with the essential fundamental thoughts that go through my head on any painting that I ever do. It could be a portrait from life, an illustration out of my head, uh, or anything in between. The thoughts are identical. And uh, this simple little painting is going to approach every every major problem of a painting. Okay, so right away, the thing that, that I am painting, or that this, when you're painting like this, the thing that we're doing is we're painting light. Okay, we're not drawing outlines, we're not drawing 3D form, we're painting light. And if we paint light correctly, it will look 3D, it will look like it has form, but really it's just two-dimensional shapes of, of color and value. Okay, so so right away the thing that the first thing to think about when you're painting you are constantly dealing with understanding where the light is coming from and how that affects the shapes of light and shadow there are two families in your painting there's a light and a shadow family and these things are what helps us or what makes us understand what we see in real life and in a painting it's the same uh, when when we see a light and shadow, they are always separate. Okay, as you can see in this painting right now, you can clearly tell where the light is and where the shadow is. Uh, that is one of the essential elements of having a readable painting, is being able to understand, having your brain understand where light is hitting and where shadow is. Now I've picked a very obvious light source for this. I'm basically painting um, a sunlight effect. I've got a single source that's a hard light uh, coming from somewhere in the top right. So it's basically like a sun. And that's a very convenient light source to paint because it creates very clear light and shadow shapes. That's why you see some of the beginner life drawing sessions where they have like a single source on the model because it creates these shapes that are easy to draw. So drawing in a painting is really placing your shapes of value. Okay, the drawing in this painting is very simple. I've got those, those spheres there are really not spheres to me. They're shapes of light and shadow. So the front one is a shape of light next to a shape of shadow. And then to the left of that is a shape of shadow next to a shape of light. Uh, and below that is the cast shadow shape they make. Okay, I think in these terms. It's always just shapes of light and shapes of shadow. Now when you have these clearly in your mind and clearly on the canvas, then you can start worrying about things like color temperature. Okay, is the light warm or is it cool? And in this case, I'm painting a warm light. The sun is, a, is always a warm light. And that's what I'm imitating here. Uh, and when you have a warm light, something happens. The, the things that are lit, the light shapes of value, are going to be of a warmer color temperature than the things that are in shadow. You might ask why this happens. This is, by the way, this is the closest thing to a rule in painting, is that. Is that warm light will produce cooler looking shadows, and the opposite is true cool light will produce warmer looking shadows. The reason this is true is because when you have like a warm light like I do here, everything the warm light hits is going to look warm. That makes sense, right? Therefore, everything the warm light doesn't hit is going to look cool. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. So you always keep your values separate, light and shadow, and you keep your temperature separate. Now, it, this doesn't mean that because this is a warm light, that everything in the light is screaming warm and everything in the shadow is, is freezing cold. Okay, you work these together. Uh, if you notice in some of the light shapes that I've already got some cooler warms against some warmer warms that are creating a nice interplay of color. And you look at any good painting and you'll see this. Um, this happens a lot, and even in real life. Nothing is just one flat warm color or cool color. It's intermixed. But the, the thing that you have to keep in mind is that these temperatures belong to a family. So the warm family should never go cooler than the cooler family. You can still have warms and cools in a warm light area, but it can't ever be cooler than what's going on in the cool family. Does that make sense? Same with values. When you have light and shadow, like we do here very clearly, nothing in the shadow can ever be as light as something in the light. And nothing in the light can ever be as dark as something in the shadow. Again, it's very simple. The best part about painting, the thing that I love, is that it never gets more complicated than this. Everything I talk about here really is as complicated as it ever gets. 
the only thing you that is challenging is combining all of these fundamentals like they compound on top of each other and when you're dealing with a more complex situation you have to really have your wits about you and be able to pull these fundamentals out effortlessly you know they just come out because you understand them so well that's the challenge of painting that's why the more you do it the more effortless well the more effortless effortless it looks anyway um, but it's always the same thoughts going through your head and uh, I, I know this is true because some of the painters I really look up to say the exact same things and you know those are the kind of things I'm discovering along the way too um, okay so let's talk shadow for a second in the beginning of this painting I established very clear shadow shapes um, and I left them that way for a while this is we're in for almost six minutes into the painting and uh, up until this point they were pretty flat now I'm working into the shadows adding reflected light and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you heard this term reflected light uh, reflected light really is is kind of the secret to making your painting look like it's real light at least from my experience and in my opinion reflected light is essential and it will make your painting glow or it will make your make your light look convincing um, reflected light is tricky though because it only exists in shadow or at least it's only visible in shadow and reflected light will lighten your shadows but you have to keep in mind that reflected light will never make your shadow values lighter than anything that's actually in the light so you're gonna see where I'm painting right now at the left edge of that sphere I'm really cr I'm just creeping right up to the edge of of that value being competitive with the light value but it still stays in shadow squint your eyes down and you can see a very clear separation still I'm just pushing those values just to the breaking point and uh, it's giving that sphere a nice look like it the, the light is bouncing off the ground or bouncing off the wall and hitting it and it, it really gives it a, a luminous look even look at this the front sphere receiving uh, light although it's bouncing off the back sphere and hitting the front you kind of see it's a little redder there because I in my in my thinking it's a it's a warmer bounced light hitting a cooler shadow so you're gonna get some warms influencing the cools you see this gets back to what I was saying before about how you can still have warm and cool play in a, a predominantly cool part of your painting but it can never get to the point where that reflected light is warmer than anything in the light okay I'm still keeping those families together just like the value families they're still clearly light and shadow there they don't compete at all and this is what you have to keep in mind for anything you paint even when the light source is diffused or not as obvious as this this principle still exists look at photographs uh, but I prefer looking at real life squint your eyes down and just try and identify these areas and see if you can keep that in your mind um, edges also come into play and edges really are something that's kind of like the icing on the cake and uh, I only started to understand edges after I started to understand value and drawing and color temperature but edges um, edges exist everywhere there's an edge where the sphere meets the background there's an edge where the shadow and light meet there's an edge where the spotlight meets the wall uh, edges there's an edge between every brush stroke in the painting okay edges are everywhere and you have to have interesting edges to help have an interesting painting um, you can see examples of a hard edge for example where the back sphere meets the shadow the darks of the background there's a hard edge there another hard edge is where the, the cast shadow line is those are always hard edges uh, softer edges are where the uh, form is turning on the front sphere you can see where the light turns into shadow is a soft edge and you can also find lost edges a lost edge is where you can't even tell where one thing ends and the other thing begins and you can see lost edges where the uh, the two spheres are meeting and hitting and intersecting the ground uh, you I haven't even shown you where the sphere begins and ends into the ground yet your brain understands it those are lost edges uh, li real life is full of lost edges and uh, those really help uh, when you're painting okay so I'm almost done here um, so basically I've talked drawing I've talked value I've talked color temperature and I've talked edges if you keep these things in mind as you paint your paintings will improve and I recommend doing simple studies like this from life or from your imagination and try and just capture that realistic result that you see in real life Okay, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.